Hi there. In this tutorial, I will show you how to build a web form using Vaadin. So we'll create this form, we'll bind it to a job object, and then when this form gets submitted, we will take the information, persist it to the POJO, and show it up uh, in this data grid here. So it'll work something like this. Uh, we have a sample snack order form here, so we need to know who's ordering snacks. We'll have some dynamic content here, so we get to choose what type of snack we want to order, and then we will populate the actual snacks based on that. So if we select drinks, we have different options than if we select candy, for instance. All right, so I'll order two gummy bears, click order, and you can see that that gets shown in the grid. So this is the application that we will build. We're going to use Vaadin for building this application. Vaadin is a framework for building web applications in Java, and it's a very simple way for us to build these dynamic forms on the web. So let's get started. So to get started, we'll go to the Vaadin website. And here on the Vaadin website, we'll go to create an application. So we're going to download one of the starters here. We'll take the basic project starter here. We can give our Maven group ID an app name. So in this case, we can call our app something like snack order and download it. Now this will download a zip file containing a Maven project. So you see we have a POM XML here. What I'll do is I'll open up this project in my ID. In my case, this is IntelliJ. If you're using a different ID, be sure to check out vaadin.com slash tutorials for how to include or open up Maven projects in different IDs. So we'll let uh, IntelliJ uh, download all the dependencies. While it's doing that, we can take a look at what we have in here. So in here, we have a main view class. Uh, this main view is extending from a vertical layout, essentially meaning that any content that we put into our main view will get stacked vertically on top of each other. It's mapped to the empty route, which means that this uh, view will get shown when we're navigating to the context route or like slash nothing on our application. Now we can delete a bunch of stuff here that we don't need for this demo. So I'll delete this PWA annotation and I will just delete everything that's inside of the main view here. Now what I want to start with here is creating our data model. So we will have a job object that we'll use for saving all of our data into. We'll call this a snack order. And this will just be a plain old Java object, a POJO. Our snack order will have three fields on it, a name, the snack itself, and then a quantity, how many of these snacks we're ordering. Like this. So you can see I initialized all these values to something for the name and snack, empty strings, and for the quantity to one. Now, I also want to create getters and setters for these so we can access them. Let my ID take care of that. So that's it. All right, so now that we have our data model in place, we can go ahead and start building the UI. So if we think about the application that we're building, it essentially consists of two main parts. We have the form on top, and then we have the data grid underneath. And on top of all of this, we have a heading so the way we can structure this in our vertical layout is by adding three main components to it. The first one will be a H1, so a heading level one, snack order. The second thing will be the form. The form is a little bit more complex, so we'll actually defer that to a separate method. I'll just call it here, build form like that. And then we will add the grid. Now the grid I will actually create here as a field on our class, so we'll create a private grid of type snack order. We'll call this snack order grid, and we'll initialize this to be a new grid. Let's import that grid, and then we'll pass in the class snack order dot class here, and with this information the data grid will be able to automatically uh, create columns for all the fields in this snack order POJO. So with that in place, we'll add it here as the third component in our main layout. 
a snack order grid like that. And what's still missing here is the form, so we can use the ID again to create this like that. The form will need to include fields for modifying all the properties on snack order. So we'll go ahead and create new components for all of those. So we'll have a text field for both the name and the quantity. And then we'll have a combo box, which is essentially a select with uh, filtering built in that we can use for both the snack types and the snacks themselves. So we'll create a text field. First one for name. Call this name field. Then we'll create a new text field for quantity. Quantity field. And then we'll create the combo boxes. The combo box of strings for type. For now, we'll just uh, initialize these with a empty list. So we won't add any options to them right now. So we'll call this type select. And we can go ahead and copy this and create a, another select here for snacks. Snack select. Like that. Okay, so those are the fields we need to actually edit the order. In addition to those, we'll need two things. We'll need a button for submitting the order. So we'll create a new button order. Like that. And then we'll create a div for collecting any error messages. Call this errors layout. Okay, with the fields created, I'm going to configure uh, the button here. I'm going to set the theme name to primary. That way it'll stand out a little bit more, have a blue color to it. And the other thing we need to do is define how these components will get laid out. So right now, since we are in a vertical layout, if we just added everything to this vertical layout, everything would get stacked on top of each other, which is not what we want here. Instead, what we want is to have all of these fields and the button next to each other. And then we want to have that form and this Aris layout stacked on top of each other. So the way we do this is by first creating a horizontal layout for all the form uh, related fields. So we'll add in the name field, the quantity field, the type select, the snack select, and the order button. And we can call this our form layout. The other thing we need is a wrapper that will place this form layout and the div on top of each other. So we can just use another div for that, for instance. We'll create a new div and we'll pass in the form layout and then the errors layout in there. And we'll call this wrapper layout. And then what we'll do is we'll return this wrapper layout here, which will get returned in here. And then our main view add here will make sure that we have an H1, we'll have the form, and then we'll have the snack orders grid. I'm going to configure these layouts a little bit more. The first thing I will do is for the form layout, I will set the default alignment of the components to baseline. That means that they're going to be aligned, their baselines will be aligned and they'll look nice. And then for the wrapper layout, I'll just set the width to 100% uh, to make sure that the form has enough space to expand to the side. All right, so let's go ahead and run our application and make sure that we're on the right track. I'm gonna run this application through Maven. So I'll add a new uh, run configuration here for Maven. And we'll call this run. And essentially what this does is it's just a shortcut for running a Maven target. So in this case, we could, for instance, run package and jetty run uh, in order to run it. So package will build it and create a package, and then Jetty Run will start a server. Press Apply, OK, and now you can see my Run button got 
enabled here and we can click on that wait for this to start up and while it's starting up I'll minimize the window here a little bit minimize that actually I'll hide the sidebar here and then we can go ahead and navigate to localhost 8080 so what's loading here you can see that we have the fields here so we have the name quantity type and snack we have the button it has the primary style name so it's blue and we have pretty much everything that we need here to get started all right so the next thing I want to do is add some dynamic functionality to our form so I want to have this type select determine whether or not the snack select is enabled and what the contents of the snack select should be so in order to do that we'll need some snacks to work with I will paste in a map of different snacks that I've created so we have some fruits we have candy we have drinks and then just a list of choices for each so for the type select what we want to show there as the selection options are the keys from this map so we can go and change the collections the empty list here to snacks.keys so we'll get the key set from there and then what I want to do is start off by having the snack select be disabled so we'll call set enabled to false so we don't want anyone to be able to select a snack until they first select what the type should be. Then for the type select, we'll add a value change listener. And in the value change listener, we'll first sec check what the value is. So we'll get e dot get value. This will be the type. And then we'll call snack select dot set enabled and check whether the type is not equal to null and that it's not empty like that actually we'll need this uh, a little bit later on so I'll extract this to a boolean so we'll set that to enabled and then if it is enabled what we'll do is we'll call snack select dot set items with snacks dot get with the type also since we're changing the type we want to call snack select dot set value to an empty so we reset the value every time so it makes sense all right, we'll save this. I will press build here, and that should cause Jetty to uh, rerun itself. And in a little while, we can go and check in our browser that this works. All right, so you can see now that the snack select is disabled by default. You can see that we have our choices here in the type select. And if I select one of those, you can see that we get the right corresponding snacks to select from. So now we have a part of the functionality in place. The next thing that we want to do is bind these UI components to the snack object data model that we have. To do that, we're going to use a binder from the Vaadin framework. So we'll create a new binder. And this will take in a snack order class so it knows what we're binding to. We'll call this just binder. And the way binder works is that we tell it how to bind a specific UI component to a property on our data objects. As we do this, we're also able to define some validations, conversions, and other things that may be relevant. So as an example for the name, we'll call binder dot for field. And the first field is our name field. And then for this, we'll call as required. So we're going to set this as a required field. We can give it a 
validation message like name is required. And then we'll bind it. So this is defining how the field should map to a property on, on the data object, on the snack order here. So this will bind to the name property. Okay, the next one will be a little bit more complex. So for the quantity field, we're gonna start again with binder for field, quantity, then again, as required. But here, because our underlying data model is an integer, but the text field deals with strings, what we need to do is add a converter that knows how to convert between strings and integers. We'll call with converter, and we'll pass in a new string to integer converter. And here we can give a error message like quantity uh, needs to be a number like that. Also, we'll want to add a validator for this. We want to make sure that somebody who's placing an order orders at least one. They don't order like negative five gummy bears or something like that. So we'll add a with validator. We'll pass in a new integer range validator. We'll give it a error message here. So quantity, quantity needs to be at least one. We'll give the minimum accepted value one and then the maximum, let's say 50. All right. And then we'll call bind and give it the property name again, quantity. The property names here, uh, if it wasn't clear, are the field names here as strings. There is a alternative more explicit API where you can actually pass in the getter and the setter. So if we look at the API here, we can first pass in a setter here. So snack order dot get quantity and snack order dot set quantity like that. That would be a more explicit way of doing this. But typically, I, I use this shorthand of just passing in the name and letting VOD in itself uh, handle the mapping. Of course, the downside of this is that you don't get the same type safety here. So I, I could potentially uh, typo quantity here and, and it wouldn't work. All right, the last field that we uh, want to bind is the snack. So again, binder for field, snack select as required, and then we'll bind to snack. And we can give it a error message again. Please select a snack. Okay, we'll save those. One thing that I wanna do here as well in order to improve the user experience a little bit is having the order button disabled until everything is filled out correctly. That way we can kind of guide the user to not make mistakes. The way we can do this is by listening to the binder and add a status change listener to it. So we can call binder, add a status change listener. And what we want to do here, let's close that. So what we want to do here is for the order button, we'll set enabled equal to status dot has validation errors. Okay. Of course, in order for this to make sense, we'll first of all, need to disable the order button from the beginning. So we'll set this to false. Actually move this up a little bit here so it's easier to see. All right, now that we have the binder defined how, how the fields should map to the snack order, the final thing that we wanna do here is call binder.readbean and we'll pass in a new snack order. So we'll read in an empty bean that we can use for binding. All right. Just build this and make sure that everything is still working. All right, so we'll check this out, change things here. And you can see that 
as we change the type here. Uh, we now get a validation error here, and the button is disabled, as we would expect it to be. We select a value there, which makes this valid, and the button gets enabled. And there's a bug in the current version of Vaadin as of the recording of this, so you can see that currently um, this order button is enabled in the beginning, so uh, the status change listener considers uh, non-filled in required values as valid. That's uh, a known bug and should be fixed shortly. If you need a workaround, you can check out the text version of this tutorial and see how to do that. However, what we want to do next is finish up the application and add the logic for the order button here. So again, we'll go in here, we'll take the order button, we'll add a click listener on it. In the click listener, what we want to do is, first of all, try to save the, uh, save the form into a snack order object. And then if that fails, we'll show some error messages. So I will start by creating a new snack order object into which I want to save this. So I'll call this saved order. And then we'll call bean and we'll pass in this saved order into it. This will complain about not being surrounded by try-catch, so we can, we can do that. Actually move this in here. So we'll deal with the validation exceptions in just a little bit. If that worked, I will call a new method that I'll create called addOrder. This will add the order to the grid, so we'll pass in the saved order. We'll create the method here and get to it in a second. Then we'll call binder.readbean with a new snack order. That way we're clearing the form values because this is bound to those fields. So setting an empty order there will clear out the bound fields. The snack type uh, select is not bound to the uh, snack order object, so we'll clear that ourselves. So we'll call snack types, uh, call type select dot set value to an empty string. To handle the validation exceptions, I'm going to collect all the error messages and display them in the errors layout. So for we'll take the errors layout, we'll add a new HTML component, which just takes in HTML. The HTML that we want to pass in will be e.getValidationErrors.map or sorry, that stream map. So here we'll get each error, and for each error we want to add a paragraph plus the errors error message, and then close the paragraph tag like that. And then we'll collect all of these paragraphs, and we can join them with a new line. Now, at this point, we're only adding new errors to our error layout, and probably what we want to do is, when we're trying to save again, we'll clear out that. So we'll I can set the text uh, content, for instance, of errors layout to an empty string to kind of clear it out any time we click on this. OK, so we have a way of writing the form contents into a Java bean, and we call this add order method, which we want to add to our data grid. Now I'm going to, in this demo, I'm just going to keep an in-memory list of the different uh, orders that we have. So I'll create a new private list of snack orders. Call the snack orders will be a new, let's use a linked list like that. So what we can do here in our add order method is we'll take snack orders, we'll add the saved order, and then we'll take the grid, snack order grid, and we'll set, call set items with snack orders. Okay, we'll save that, we'll build, and hopefully if everything went well, we should have a working application.
All right, so let's try this out. Marcus, quantity one, type, let's get some fruit. Let's get a banana, let's order it. And you can see that the order is now listed in our grid. The form got cleared out and that's pretty much it. So be sure to check out the text version of the tutorial for a link to the GitHub and the full source code and some additional reading. Thanks for watching.